What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm sorry for being gone so long. However, there was a lot of things going on to the other side of the business, a lot of which you've probably noticed on Instagram. But again, welcome back and I've got something ultra special for you. And if you're good at reading titles, you probably already know what I'm up to. Real quick guys, today's video is brought to you by Minor Design Co. I'll put the link in the description below. If you're a startup business much like Cure Cycling and need a full overhaul or revamp of your logos or website designs, I highly suggest you reach out to this guy. You can check out the work that he did for me at cure-cycling.com. You can even pick up some shirts like the one I'm rocking now. Check it out. All right guys, so this is the triumphant return of the 2021 Polygon Siskiyou D5. I recently bought it off of the original owner and I overcame all of the objections that I had from before on part two when I took it out for a trail ride. What I did was I installed an air fork up front, a dropper post, as well as a one by nine clutched drivetrain in the rear. And now this thing should be absolutely flawless. But real quick, I'm gonna go through each part, tell you what it is and why I chose those selections. All right, so for the fork, we use the SR Suntour Epixen. The reason I use this fork is because it is air chambered. It worked with the factory headset arrangement and it worked with the factory wheel. The goal was to find plug and play products for you guys to use that were also affordable. I scooped this fork for around $200. Okay, now as for the drivetrain, what we used was the Microship Advent. The reason I selected this is because we were able to reuse the nine speed cassette that came factory with the bike. I do wanna add that you do need to get the derailleur as well as the shifter because the shifter throws are specific to that mechanism. So just keep that in mind. I think for the two parts, I spent about a hundred bucks. So for the crank set, the one by crank set, we use the new Shimano Deor crank set. And the reason I selected that is because we were able to reuse the factory bottom bracket. It was literally plug and play and it is a solid upgrade. And then lastly, we use the KS Rage Eye dropper. I went with a 150 mil travel and it fit perfect. And I ran it all internally through the frame and up to this nice underbar remote. Now, I got this on closeout for about a hundred bucks, so hopefully you can find something similar. All right, so that's enough chit chat. That kind of wraps up everything that I did to it. You know what the next step's gonna be. It's time to get it out on the trail. This just in, in honor of achieving our 1,000 subscriber goal, Cure Cycling is giving away a 10 liter hydration bag and a multi-tool that could be yours. All you have to do is comment in the comment section below why you think you should win, and we'll pick one lucky winner. Good luck. All right, we're here, Mount Zion again, this time on the D5. So to give y'all some more background, because I don't think I mentioned it earlier in this video, basically the goal was to only spend 500 total on mods to make this bike more capable. I didn't want to blow it out of the water because it's not realistic. A lot of people who are gonna buy this bike are gonna buy it with a budget in mind. It might be open to some upgrades, but not open to spending thousands because at that point they could have just bought something else, right? So yeah, $500 budget. And I think this bike's gonna do really well. And I hope to prove that today. Let's put our new dropper down, get a little bit of speed and see how we do. Oh yeah, it's quiet, no clanking. Gotta love that. And this front fork feels way better. Loving that. Actually feels like it has a damper in it, you know? Those coil forks, they just kind of do whatever. Nice. A little descent here. Oh yeah, this bike feels so much more capable than it did before. Still a little noisy. Microshift clutch derailleur mech is not as 
fancy schmancy as a SRAM or a Shimano, but it is substantially quieter. And if you don't believe me, go watch the part two video of me riding this bike. Now there are gonna be a little bit of compromises with the nine speed drivetrain. I'm not gonna have as much granny low as an 11 or 12 speed. Uh, so when I go into my lowest gear, I'll likely hit the sweep adjust to lock out the rear shock to get a little extra oomph. Because some of the climbs out here are steeper than they appear. But the truth is you can ask any of the old heads, the 11 and 12 speed stuff is way more than you really need. What's most important is just making sure you have strong legs and you train your endurance level. All right, so I'm locked out in the back and in the lowest gear in the nine speed. This is the first climb. I'm chugging right along. It's not too bad, honestly. Got to be conscious of my line. Oh yeah, we're good. I got this. It's gonna be a workout though. Yes, indeed. Jared's burning calories today. Drop her down, some descending here. This is normally when I can determine whether a bike is fast or not so fast. Not too shabby. 29ers are definitely faster. As you guys saw, I'm doing a thousand subscriber giveaway to celebrate. Make sure you enter in the comment section below. I wanna thank my patrons today for helping me out and sponsoring my videos because that helps make sure that I can do these giveaways. I like to give back, so thank you. Yeah, so far I'm doing okay with the nine speed. You know, I am pushing a little bit harder on the cranks, but it's not like life ending. We're getting real close to the drop zone section, which is gonna be interesting to see. Cause normally I'm navigating a bike with at least 150 mils of front travel through this section. And this one is rocking 120. All right, here we are, drop zone. Let's see how this cross country bike does. Oh yeah, here it is. All right, baby, come on, baby. Ah, not too bad, a little sketch. I'm just not used to it, that's all. Felt fine. All right, for the record, that drops about four feet. Kind of hard to tell on camera, but we did just fine. Now, had I still been on the coil fork that this bike was equipped with, you're darn right, I would have blown through all the travel and made a loud noise. But not today, baby. And I was able to keep the seat low so I didn't get bucked over the bars. Let's do another drop. Oh yeah, that was rad, feels really good. This climb can get pretty steep. Give me the goods, micro shift. Flip that sweep adjust, lock the rear out. Yeah, boy. Now we're really climbing. Another drop. This one's about two and a half, but it's a hook to flat. Yeah, I think it did fine. If I wanted to shave another pound off, I could have converted these tires to tubeless, but that would have crossed my $500 budget, so I left that out. But if you decide to take on this project for yourself, that would be what I think is the next thing you should do. Coming up on a little jump here. Nice, nice. I don't think you can get a better bike for 1500 bucks. I'll be honest, this feels good. Hello. So just in case y'all were curious, this bike was not mine originally. It was uh, one of my patron's bikes actually, but he's ready to move on to bigger and better things. So he sold it to me so I can continue this saga on the channel. And that's why I decided to make it a project and see what this thing can do. Yeah, this Suntour Epixen fork is actually pretty cool. I don't mind it. What's interesting about that is that it is quick release and straight steerer. Again, I chose that so it could work with the standards this bike was already set up for. And I mean, I'm sure it flexes more than 
a tapered fork and one with a through axle, but it's, again, it's not the end of the world. The thing is pretty good. It actually comes with a remote lockout. I just didn't put it on because I didn't feel like doing it. But if somebody wants to install that when they buy this bike, it will be included in the sale. Moving right along, drop right here. Not a big one. Sweet. Took it well. Air spring feels pretty progressive in this little fork. It doesn't go straight to bottom. And I would say that it is on par, possibly better than a recon. And considering how affordable MicroShift Advent is, it shifts really well. I'm impressed with their products. And that's why I think you're seeing it more and more on entry level bikes. You know, you see it on the Specialized Rock Hopper. It shifts well. It's a good product. Don't be afraid of it. Now, what might be nice for this bike is if we could do a remote lockout for this rear shock. That would be cool. But it would probably take a nicer rear shock. Again, that's outside of our budget. I wanted to make a capable $1,500 bike. And I would say I did it. And when I say $1,500, I mean $1,500 full suspension, not hardtail. It's easy to make a capable hardtail for $1,500. Finding myself having to consciously stay a little bit looser riding this bike. You know, with it being less travel, you have to be conscientious of your line choice and a little more loose. You can't rely on the suspension to take care of everything for you. Uh, not that that's a bad thing. It's going to make you a better rider. But it's something to be aware of. All right, here comes a pretty decent descent here. Come on, Polygon. Might do almost 30 miles per hour in this section. It's always pretty fast. And you need it for this climb. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm about to make it. Almost flipped backwards, that was awesome. Come on, baby. Yeah, cross country steam, climbing champ here. Even with the nine speed. I'm honestly pretty stoked I made it up that just now. Last time I was out here, I was on that rip mo. I had to walk that bad boy. Hike a bike. So as you guys may or may not have already heard, I did start a nice little apparel store with merchandise for everybody. A little something for everybody. I'm gonna put a coupon code at the bottom of the screen right now. And if you want something, have a little discount on me. You're welcome. And if you don't know where to go, go to cure-cycling.com. The exposure in here is crazy. Real bright and real dark. Because everything's wet. Here we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're in the home stretch, really. Almost done already. Bike did awesome. Really did. For anybody that said you gotta save up for the D7 to make a decent bike, I spent less than D7 money on this. That's pretty darn good. All right, gang, I'd say that's mission accomplished. Final thoughts, Siskiyou D5's not so bad. Especially now. Yes, indeed. Had a lot of fun on this bike. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks for watching. As always, make sure that you guys subscribe for more content, and I'll make sure I see you guys next time.